In 1948, the Palestinian village of Lubia, in the Western Galilee, Israel, was totally depopulated. It had been home to some 2,700 people. Like Lubia, many Palestinian villages in Israel were completely destroyed, and the landscape of Palestine was changed forever. Just um, two weeks ago, uh, turned to me one, one Israeli friend, and she told me that she has a very interesting story to tell about her uncle, who was one of the occupiers and the, the people from the Palmach that expelled the village of Kesaria. And she told me, I, can you take from me this heavy burden and have the story? He never talked about the expulsion of Arabs from Kisaria until just before he died. One of the things he mentioned was an order to expel the residents of the little fishing village located on the sands of Kisaria. We knew that if you destroyed the roofs of their homes, the Arabs would leave. So, a group of us guys, we destroyed the village roofs and they left. Like that. So easy as if people's lives weren't involved. My aunt, Shoshana, shifted uncomfortably. And then his wife said to him, Motkele, you don't think you should shut up on that? On, uh, you know, some things we don't tell. And he said, Shoshanka, and if I don't tell, it didn't happen? <laughs> Something like that. That the Nakba is something that we, okay, is there somehow. We as Israelis, we knew almost nothing about it. When I was 18, I never heard, of course, not the word, but also no, no, nothing about Palestinian refugees. Nothing. There was a in Israel independence war. They attacked us. They didn't accept the, the partition resolution or partition plan. And there was a war, and they lost the war, and they are out and halas. There is no problem for us, not whatsoever. There was... A, very justified war and nothing about their story, their other stories, uh, of course not stories of massacres. Okay, there was the Yassin massacre that was quite known, but it was very much an exception. This is the story, how the story goes. I grew up believing that Israel fought six just wars to prevent it being wiped out. And that to challenge Israel's actions is to challenge the right of Jews to exist. In the diaspora, we continued to cling to Israel's official version of a Jewish past. Yet the heroic story of David, who triumphs over Goliath, began to crack for many Israeli Jews during Israel's first war on Lebanon. Unlike Israel's past war, uh, the Lebanon war was regarded not as a defensive war, but as an aggressive war. It was widely seen not as a war of no choice, but as a war of choice. It was 1982, the outbreak of the first Lebanon war, that it was not warranted, was not justified. There was a TV presentation of that war. For the first time, I could see at least uh, how it looked on the civilian side. Uh, and I was outside the country, so the first time I saw it from the outside. And I was asked by the Israeli embassy to represent Israel wherever I can, defending its actions in Lebanon. And I refused. And I had to ask myself why I refused. And this suddenly connected to 48. So it was as if I could see what happened in 1948 because I could see with my own eyes what happened in 1982. And I, I, it suddenly turned the dissertation from something very dry, <laughs> very still, into a very vivid picture and a very clear mapping of who was the criminal, who was the victim.